Another episode of Midnight on Earth. I'm your host, Jake Weaver, and we're here to bring you more knowledge, more lights, and more love. We have an amazing guest today. I'm super honored and I'm super grateful to have Cass Hillard with us. She's an author, she's a psychic, she's a lot of things, but she wrote the book Games Psychics Play, a guidebook to enhance your intuitive and psychic gifts. It's an incredible book. I read it. I love it. We're going to talk to her, but first I need you to do something for me. Follow me on Instagram at midnight underscore on underscore earth. That's the address. Follow me there. Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts. They all have a button. You can click, click that button, follow me and you'll get the notifications. You'll know when the episodes drop and you'll, you'll be there with us in real time. Of course, the most important thing is tell a friend people that you know, that want to know about psychic gifts, how to develop their psychic gifts. You know where to send them. We're here. Midnight on earth.com. All right. I have to do that every episode. It's, it's better than a commercial. I don't have any ads. It's, it's, it's just trying to get the information out to people. These authors, these, these guests, they have such incredible information. We, we want to get it out there more. So here she is. She's Cass, Cass Hillard. I'm going to read her bio really quick. Here we go. Cass Hillard is an accomplished metaphysician, spiritualist, and author. She holds a bachelor's degree in metaphysics from the International Metaphysical Ministry and has been a student of metaphysics for over 50 years. She is an ordained minister, and before retiring, was the owner and director of Reflections Plus, a holistic healing center. There, she practiced as a reflexologist, hypnotist, past life regressionist, and Reiki master, and also Reiki healer. She has facilitated classes and workshops on these subjects, as well as psychic development and mediumship at her own center. She has taught this information in various locations, including cruise ships, and is here today to talk with us about her book, Games Psychics Play, a guidebook to enhance your intuitive and psychic gifts. Hello, Kaz. How are you doing today? Hi, Jake. I'm doing great. And I'm (laughs) so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. You have an amazing book. You did something really special with this book. I have a feeling you've done a lot of special things in your life, but this book is amazing. And I want to talk to you about it more. I'll be happy to talk (laughs) about it with you. Well, we're hanging out. It's, It's me and you. It's Jake and Cass. So I want to know about your life. I want to know everything. And I noticed that in your book, you know, you started out talking about your early life and how as a child you had these abilities you you heard these voices these guiding voices you felt these presences and i've often wondered why we suppress these in our children when they manifest why as a society as a culture and it's worldwide it's across religions why do we suppress these things That's a good question. And I've asked myself that very same thing. And um, I've I've tried really hard not to suppress that in my own children to help them blossom in the way that they need to. But (laughs) excuse me, I I feel like it's it's because uh, we get conditioned in our society. You know, when I was growing up, 
um, I would go to, I took myself to church and I would listen to the, the preacher and go, and I'm a, a kid, I'm like eight, nine years old and go, that's not how it was. That's not what they mean. And, you know, I just seemed to know that that uh, what they were talking about wasn't quite right. And, and then I also noticed that I could see these outlines around the preachers, and that was pretty fascinating too. But I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know who to ask because no one talked about it. Did you feel like that, you know, perhaps you had an illness or something like as a child? You're like, why am I seeing these things? Nobody's talking about these things. This must be abnormal. Or did you realize mm-hmm. that it was a natural experience and it just wasn't talked well, about. Yeah, I just realized it was natural because I just always could do it. And I didn't think I was sick, you know, at all. I, I just thought, well, I don't know why everybody else can't see what I'm seeing. Don't they understand? And, and of course, as a kid, you don't have the words to to be able to express that. So you just keep quiet about it and go about your business. But did it excite you? as a child that you were able to foresee certain things, like you said in your book, when your aunt called and you knew the call was coming and then it happened to be that person and you had that happen over and over. Did that give you some sort of empowerment or did it just seem like strange to you? Or did you think maybe it was a stream of synchronicities? Uh, Well, you know, when, when I write that about my aunt, I mean, I was really very young. I wasn't very old at all. And so I didn't think in terms of synchronicity. I just thought, well, of course she's coming. I, if I can feel it. I just know she is. It just feels like that kind of a day. But I, I, I was kind of a loner as a kid. So I'd spend a lot of time out in nature and let the creatures talk to me. It just seemed very natural and let the trees talk to me and hear what they had to say. What was the what was the wind saying? You know, so I I guess looking back, maybe I was kind of a weird kid. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in a good way, I think you are just a higher frequency being and you were having this experience. And let me tell you talking to spiritual people from all over the world that are very similar to yourself. They all have that same story going out in nature, communing with nature, communing with the nature spirits. They all have that same refrain because it's such a natural experience, but somehow in humanity's history, it became a scary thing. It became fearful for us. Why do you think that is? Well, I always think it was about control. You know, how do we control these masses? Well, let's get them stirred up and get them afraid and, uh, you know, in whatever means people could do it. <clears throat> and uh, no offense to those that like to go to church, because I certainly did myself. But, um, you know, there there's some of the the ministers that that's what they're taught, too. And, I, you know, in our religions that you should be afraid, it's it might be of the devil or it's it's evil. It's it's dark to do that. You shouldn't do that. There's only one person who can talk to God or the angels, and it's just not true. Right. It's definitely a mechanism of control, it seems like, because it's diminishing the human experience. It's saying that you can Mm -hmm. only exist within this certain bandwidth, and anything Mm -hmm. outside Mm -hmm. of that is somehow supernatural. They give it this, this uh, shell of the devil or this, you know, negative aspect of our existence, our spiritual existence. And yet there's there, but they're saying that you could, that, that exists, but at the same time, anything you experience outside of that bandwidth is unreal and evil. It's very strange. It is. It is. And I, I don't understand what they're so afraid of. You know what I mean? (laughs) You know, it becomes, like you said, a mechanism of control because a more spiritually developed person is a thinking person, a person that maybe is not as easily manipulated as somebody that's not as developed. Yeah. That's, that's in that limited bandwidth, but you, you sense these things early on, but at what point in your life did they really start it to kick into high gear when you were really feeling it and you were uh, starting to do readings? Actually, it wasn't until I was, oh gosh, probably in my late 20s, early 30s, 
Uh, you know, I'd, I'd had children and I'd, I'd seen them in my dreams. I knew what they were going to look like and, you know, going through different things that we go through our different challenges and turning to a more spiritual um, way of looking at it instead of woe is me. It's like, what can I glean from this? What what is as the message for me here? if that makes sense. So I, I, st- I started actually, you know, as you said, I had a holistic healing center and I was a reflexologist by trade. And what I was noticing, I would be, you know, a foot reflexologist. So what I was noticing is as I would be working with people's feet, I would start getting messages for them. It's like their feet really? were talking to me. Interesting. Yeah. And, and um, I actually would do my sessions with my eyes closed because I could connect easier with the person, with the individual. And then, uh, so not only was I getting messages uh, about their bodies, but then sometimes um, their loved ones would start showing up with messages and it kind of was like, (laughs) Oh my. Wow. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so did you relay yeah. these messages to your clients and then what were their reactions? Uh, they just couldn't believe it. They were shocked. And, uh, you know, they, <laughs> uh, they would, I would describe who was, who I was seeing and the next session they would bring in a picture of that person and it's exactly who I would see. And so that, that just surprised me. And, um, but that's where it really started opening up because I was getting into their energy field. You know, we, we melded together and I'm a healer. And, uh, so, so that's really when it started to get real strong. And then I started practicing. So, and and is that when you felt like you could help other people with your gifts? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. And I've had wonderful mentors, fabulous mentors. I didn't have any when I was a kid. You know, they, right. they you just didn't do that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but later on, so you I started, found the people. Yeah, I started searching people out. And, and of course, you know, I had a few that were like, oh, nope, I know, just like the preachers, this is not right. This is just is not right. <laughs> so, you know, I avoided them. Well, I did notice you talked about that a little bit in your book, that there are people that are very authentic psychics and you've experienced that, but you've also experienced the charlatans. And I wondered how those people, because they're spiritual beings, just like us, just like any other human. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. how are those people existing around all these very energy sensitive people, all these very spiritual tuned in people, and yet coming at the situation with this uh, you know, like this, they want to hustle, like they want to steal or m- manipulate or mislead that energy. So low, it's a lower frequency energy. How could they possibly show up at these places and do those things? Right. Right. Um, you know, I, I think that they're there for, ev- for us to have lessons. Just, you know, our, everybody is a lesson. Everybody we come across can be a teacher to you in one way or another. And certainly um, I've seen, oh, you don't do it that way. And it's not necessary, but sometimes we, we don't believe enough in our own gifts that we resort to doing things um, that aren't, well, I, I want to say less than um, less than loving. Let's put it that way. Well, when you're exploiting a situation, someone's feelings, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you talked about in your book about a friend who had a reading and she had a curse put on her. You know, when you exploit those people that are, I don't want to say naive because that they're vulnerable, they're vulnerable. vulnerable. That's, vulnerable. That's the right word. You exploit these people that are vulnerable and the energy, the karma that comes with that is so Mm -hmm it seems like it would be devastating. And yet these people are like, that's like their job. That's like what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you you know, don't do you just sometimes wonder if it's because it's like being a fish in the water. You don't realize there's something outside of that. 
we we sometimes get so stuck uh, where we are that we think this is what it is. This is the world. This is how I have to do it. And you don't realize, put that aside and you can be so much more. Right. If you're, you know, uh, you don't have to, to, to turn to tricks to, you know, read people to go, Oh, I saw, I saw that flash of an eye. I hit a nerve. I'm going to keep going with that. This one's kind of scared, you know? So it's so much fear of lack. It's so much scarcity mindset that they're actually just blocking all the energy coming from the other people mm -hmm. in order for them to just get, they just need to get at any cost. And that's how it manifested for them. It's an interesting life path. I feel for those yeah. people. Hopefully they come to love and, and shed all that stuff at some point. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and yet what, what a great teacher, you know, for me to see that happen and go, yeah. Oh, you, you know, I mean, and, and to know that they're, act it's always shocking because I really trust people. <laughs> so it was just shocking to me to find out that people actually did that to others. Especially in this field, you know, you think about like the yeah. three card Monty people and, you know, just street games and, and hustling in that sense. But once you step into the realm of the, the spiritual, the new age people, the psychics, it's just a whole different world to pull that energy into. Yeah. And, and sadly, <laughs> sadly, when you come across, when somebody has an experience like that, that reflects on the rest of us. And so oh. people think, well, that's how every, they all are. They're all like that, which you know, is Cass, not true. Cass, I've had that same conversation with someone else about a similar subject. It's just, it's, it's brutal because it's a pool of people. One person represents everybody and, and it's out of our control. There's nothing we can really do about that. So if people are right. out there saying they're this psychic or healer or practitioner in the new age realm, and then they're a charlatan that it just makes us all look mm -hmm. bad. Like you said, it's, it's mm -hmm. terrible, but that's right, okay. Right. The good people yeah. do shine through. I mean, we are the light, you know, the light people, the truth people, they, they do kind of rise to the top. They say the cream rises to the top, you know, that, yeah. that 1% of people, they do get noticed, but your book, they is, do. it's so amazing because oh, man, I want to tell you how amazing this book is. I want to tell you right when I, got on the uh, phone with you or on the zoom call with you, but I wanted to save it for the podcast. This book is so amazing and I want everybody to get it because it's an introductory book. It takes you to all the places where there's spiritual thinking, where there's metaphysical practices and it shows you the bare bones, the basics, and then gives you some exercises, some methods to apply that knowledge. And that's what I think is so amazing. What I thought the book was so profound was that it's not just Cass's story because Cass's story is woven into this book. It's also an introduction to spiritualism and metaphysics in general. If you've never read anything about metaphysics, you've never been introduced to metaphysical concepts or spiritual concepts before, I would give someone this book because it not only describes everything in a really great detail in a really uh, easily digestible method, it also gives you exercises to then follow up on that, which is why I think the book is really amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and you need to be able to to have ways to develop your intuition and your psychic abilities. Um, I, I've had people say, well, you just start doing it. Well, what does that mean? I, I, I don't even know how to start, just start doing it, you know, so I would have to figure it out myself until I found some really good mentors. Well, we're all psychic. I think that's the biggest thing is the first thing we should tell everyone is that absolutely every human being is psychic. It's whether you've developed your psychic abilities or you haven't developed your psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they can go dormant. They can go dormant. You know, you just cover them up a bit and, but they're still there. Oh yeah. You can put a slab of concrete on those things, man. It's like, yeah. you, you have to sit there <laughs> and energetically chisel and chisel and chisel to get that off <laughs> for some people yeah. that are really, really indoctrinated into the matrix. And you know, it's uh, not that like that for everybody, but even that person 
can get to where Cass is to get to where anyone out there that's being first introduced or approaching these concepts, you can get there because you are that thing. That's the truth of the matter. You are that thing. You have those abilities. They've gone dormant. Like we talked about earlier in the podcast, maybe they weren't nurtured if when they showed themselves early on, but Cass is telling you that you have those abilities and these are some of the techniques and mechanisms of developing those things. And most importantly, you can trust yourself. Right. That's the big thing. You can trust yourself. Is it because your self, the true center, your consciousness is divine. It's connected to the infinite. So therefore there's only truth in that place. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it, it, to hear it, it can be so very subtle. Sometimes you miss it. So, you know, it takes some practice to, uh, to recognize that voice. So, and the more you do it, the louder it gets, the more clear it gets for you. So what is your intuition? You're saying it's, it's your inner voice. What other, what other terms would you use to describe your intuition? It, it's things we've all heard. It, it's, uh, you know, I have a gut feeling, you know, it, it's that still small voice it's that, that bit of a quickening. And, um, it, 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 for me, there's an actual physical spot that I can feel it, but I also can hear it in my ear. So it's like, I, I say it in the book. It's like, I have a little wire that's attached, <laughs> you know? So, um, what, what's fun for me is when you're watching a television show and you listen to how often they talk about intuition on a show. You know, like police officers, yes. they get a gut feeling. They just, you know, there's something there. They're not sure. I can't see it, but I can sense it. I got a hunch. I got a hunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a part of the you human know? experience. And we right. recognize and the mother's it. intuition and woman's intuition. We hear that all the time. Right. So we know it's there. We know it's there. It, it's just some, a lot, a lot of times those the way that those terms come about, they, they sound sort of dismissive. Oh, it's just, you know, it's just woman's intuition. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's somehow yeah. like, it's just overthought. It's just like, Oh, there yeah. was this feeling and now they're overthinking that feeling and it's, it's not actually valid. Right. Right. When it, when it is, I mean, that's what we relied on long ago. It's, you know, you get that, that, the bristles on the back of your neck going up because you something there's danger around somewhere. Yeah. There's a bear and I there. I can't see it. It was a survival thing <laughs> yeah. for us. Yeah. And now we don't need to, well, most of us don't need to worry about looking to see if there are bear anywhere near, <laughs> <laughs> but you still have those senses in place, those antennas right. picking up those energy fields that people emit. And, it, and it's, right. and it's across distance. It, it, it's across space and time. You could have a intuition that something's happening to a relative in Germany. If you're in America, you could be across the world and say, Oh my God, I think, I think uncle Peter fell down the stairs. And then all of a sudden yeah. you get this call. Oh, uncle Peter in Germany fell down the stairs. He's okay. But he fell down the stairs, you know, and it's across space and time. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's how we, you know, they used to communicate that too, before there were even tell, you know, the telephones, you, you could write a message from, you know, back at the old country, this was going on, but you already knew it because you saw it either, or you felt it, you intuited it. Do you think we've lost some sort of way to send information between humans that we knew about, like a, like almost like a psychic cell phone or something where we could visualize uh, a thought like, you know, and then send that thought to a person and they would know to intercept. And if it came, they'd be like, Oh, that was a thought from so-and-so or would that get overwhelming because you had thousands and thousands of people thinking about it? Well, that's a good question, but I kind of think it, it would depend on, um, your connection with that other individual. If you were very close, you know, um, and it's like, man, it's just something feels off about, about Jake. I need to give him a call. Jake, what's going on? You know, if I'm really close to you, whereas if I've just met you in passing, 
I might, I might miss your signal. Right. Or if somebody you know, knew about be- you and was thinking about you, you may not pick up their single because you, you haven't actually interacted with them before. Right. Right. So I, I think the closer you are, the, the easier it is. And there was actually a, a book and gosh, I can't even remember how long ago it was written, but it was mutant message down under. Okay. Are you familiar with that book? No, I'm not. The, the story. And, and I love this because they didn't say it was true, but they didn't deny it. And it was about a woman who gave up all of her worldly things. She gets dumped into, I believe it was um, in Australia. And she wants to, to um, study this uh, group of Aborigines. And um, they accept her into their colony, but she has to become one of them. So she has to give up everything, including you know, her shoes and they do a trek, but what she notices they're communicating just with their mind. And she soon starts to be able to do it. It's a fascinating book. Whoa. Well, yeah. Yeah. So there, there you go. That just points out that we probably do have that ability. We just Mm -hmm. stuffed it down because of control or people wanting to be in control or just somehow if things fall out of the normal paradigm, you just get afraid of it. If you're that type of person, it's really interesting. Right. Right. But I, I love that book. It, it was a great book to read. Well, it seems like the core of developing your psychic powers and your intuition is understanding how to be more empathic. And, and I think that that, that would be at the core because you have to learn how to feel these things, right? Um, you know what? I don't think you have to learn how to feel them I, because I think you already do. Okay. You know, you look at little children, um, like at preschool, and somebody gets hurt, and all of the little kids come around and, oh, and they're, you know, trying to comfort each other. Or, you know, so I, I think I th- it's already in place. But the more we live in our society, sometimes it's kind of, uh, beaten out of us, if you will, for lack of a better word, right. you know, Oh, don't be so sensitive and you're the blah, 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 blah. And, um, so I think, I think sometimes we, again, we put that on the shelf too. So, you Being know, sensitive what, what to other people's people, energy. yeah, what hardens people, there are all, all kinds of experiences, but there is an empathy there. But then you can, you know, there are some people that are born even more empathic than others. And I think you can learn to be more empathic, too. But I think the seed is already there. Well, what are some of the things that you can do to strengthen your intuition and your empathic ability? It's not just your ability to love or care about another person. But what we're talking about is truly feeling the feelings that another human is putting off, picking up their frequency like you're a radio and translating those feelings. So if somebody's feeling angry, you're an empathic person, you can feel that anger. And if, you, if you're not aware you're an empathic person, you might actually start to feel angry and take on that anger. But you sure can. <laughs> but at the very at the very least, you know, you, you notice that it's there. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about this empathic ability. So what do you think some of these techniques or ways people can uh, can strengthen these there 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 are several ways you know one of my favorite is is to just sit and think about the person and like i might sit and think about you and just try and connect like ask my higher self to connect with your higher self uh, because i don't want to invade your space there but if I'm trying, if I'm trying to learn to be more empathic, I want to sit with the person that I, I'm trying to empathize with, you know, and get into their energy field and see if I can feel um, how they might be feeling. Right. And it, it just it, you just have to calm yourself. And the hard part is not projecting your own stuff <laughs> onto somebody else. That's the hard part. Really? And do you think that that's for everybody or people that are more developed energetically? I, you know, I, 
That's a really good question. And I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I know that, um, for instance, um, I've had a friend, I've had friends that would be going through really, for instance, a divorce. So, so their experience is that everybody must be having those problems and, you know, they're seeing divorce written all over the place. I, I know one person had told me one time that, um, they, they thought that my husband and I and I were having trouble, which we weren't. And we've been married almost 30 years, but they were projecting their own stuff uh. onto me, you know, so the, and, and they're very empathic. But, it, you know, we just have to be careful. Yeah, because not everything we feel is. We just have to learn to decipher. I don't know. Just learn. That's not easy. I mean, that's easy to say, but it's a challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that's a good question is what are some of the things that you've learned to, to distinguish what's your energy and what is somebody else's energy that you're taking on? Okay. The, what I typically do is I have to sit with myself for just a few minutes, check in with my body check in with my emotions. What am I feeling right now? Am I good? Am I calm? Uh, do I have a little, you know, anxiety happening just so I'm aware of what I'm feeling within myself. Then when I get with another person or I'm, I'm going to read them, then I can step into their energy field and know the difference. What's mine? What's theirs? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Definitely. That you, you clearly determine what your energy signature is. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that way, when new energy comes in, you, you can really distinguish what's yours and what's theirs. That definitely mm -hmm. makes sense. But then Good. what would people do to shield themselves? If people are very empathic, you said some people are more empathic than others. People that are, oh, they very, sure are. people that are very empathic. What are some techniques they can do to shield themselves? So it's not overwhelming because I know I'm very well, empathic. First of all, I, yeah. And, I'm grateful. I'm not that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm not highly empathic. It's, <laughs> I'm it's, very grateful. It's but not there very are easy. Things. No, it is not easy. It is not easy. Because, you know, there's some things that that call to us, but there are some physical things that you can do. You know, one of them is just what I said. Look at, the, at yourself, see where you're check in with yourself, see where you are. And then wherever you go, you, you can kind of have a you have a baseline. So, you know, but in my book, I talk about some things like um, you can you can do um like uh, one of the things I like are mirrors. They deflect negative energy from you. Okay. So you can, you can put a mirror in your pocket, uh, you know, in your, uh, in your bra, anything with the, the reflective side facing out. And that can kind of, you know, deflect anybody's energies from coming to you. Interesting. Um, yeah. And you can also, there, there are things like there are essential oils you can use there. There's at the back of your head, your head, you know, where your head sits on to your neck, that occipital ridge, you feel those bones there. That's that little soft spot in between. That's known as the, the mouth of God. And that's a lot of times where that energy comes into you that you don't want. And especially when you're doing, um, they call them psychic vampires. And I don't think they mean to do it, but that just sucks your energy out of you. You can um, put some essential oil back there. You could put a scarf up to block that. Interesting. Just some things. Yeah. Just some different things like that. Um, I, I like to say a prayer, you know, a prayer of protection around me if I'm going to go out and, and definitely, you know, if you're somebody that is highly sensitive and you, you're going to the grocery store or something that can be brutal for those people, just brutal. So to arm yourself with some, some kind of, I, I believe a physical thing that you can actually see, okay, I've got this weapon, if you will, 
to help me. It is a really intense experience as a person that is very empathic myself, you know, here in Oregon, cannabis is legal. Um, what I do is I, I smoke a little cannabis before I go to these big stores or anything where there's a large group of people. And that works as a shield for me, but I'm going to try some of your techniques. I, I like the mirror idea and definitely yeah. some of those other things because people don't realize that as you talk about in your book, that we're all energy. The whole thing is energy and every frequency of energy is connected to the other frequency. It's just one big pool and there's no way to really separate yourself from mm -mm. the energy of creation. Mm -mm. So, no. so there's things that can affect you and there's things that you can affect. Yeah. Like, you know, so you, go, so do you go to your job and you're in a really happy mood and you go to your job and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, what? I, I am so grumpy right now. What is going on? You know, chances are something's happening to some of your coworkers. Right. And you're in that field. It's kind of like you're stepping you're, into this field and unless you shield yourself, you're going to take on right, the characteristics right. of that field. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and you can imagine yourself uh, encased in a little bubble if you wanted to and make it as beautiful and shimmery and shiny as you'd like so that nothing, nothing bounces into you. Yeah, that's definitely something I've heard as well. Uh, at night, I try to visualize myself in a, in a shield of white light. So there's no other astral entities that can affect me while I'm sleeping. I had problems with that for a while. That's this, beautiful. Well, I just had these beings. They just bust into my dream. Like I'd be having a dream. I'd be like a waiter at a restaurant or something. Right. And then I'd have these beings just like bust into my dream. And then all of a sudden everything would get very hyper real and lucid. And it would just be this very dark experience. And I would just be like, leave me alone, you know? And I had this problem oh. for, for years until I started doing that. And then it stopped. Ah, that's good. Something else that I've done uh, kind of along those lines. If you live where you've got a lot of trees around you, I do. I've asked the trees. Yeah. I've asked the trees to be sentinels and keep them everything away. Anything that isn't of light and love away from me. And they're happy to do it. Yeah. You've never heard of an evil tree. Have you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although those catalpa trees can kind of look evil, but they're gorgeous trees. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I th one thing I thought was interesting about your book in the section where you were talking about psychic gifts is getting those psychic hits and signals and being able to differentiate what those things were. Like, how did you develop that? technique like how are you able to get so good at that you you know you know the the what real realtors say location 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 it's practice 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 you know there's no easy way around it you have to practice you have to practice and you have to be willing to be wrong you trust yourself, but be willing to be wrong because it's only natural. We go like, oh my gosh, well, if I tell, maybe I, I'm going to say this to Jake and maybe it's not right, but that's exactly what I get. But maybe it isn't. And you start to second guess yourself. You have to um, be willing to set your ego aside and just say, just say it, just say it. And, but, but the hard part is, is learning to discern what those hits are. What do those things mean? You know, I have to be able to describe something to you so that it makes sense to you. So um, being able to connect with your energy and then asking your guides, my guides, your guides to help me with it, that that's important to do. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the spirit guys, because that's something I'm very interested in. Is this something you've connected with? angels and these, these astral beings, is that something you felt in your life? Um, I mean, are they ancestors? Well, are they angels, these spirit guides? Well, they can be, they can be, they can be all, you know, definitely I've had ancestors come to me and certainly, um, 
the, you know, civilizations have, have prayed to their ancestors for strength and assistance. So we know that that's very powerful because once we leave this earth plane, our energy is still there. We, you know, we continue to exist. So, right. so they're out there helping us and they're happy to help us. And, and I have to tell you, <laughs> my experience with an angel was not a fun one. I, I will tell you that um, I do like angels. <laughs> really? Let's but hear I, it. No, I'd love to hear that story. You want to hear about oh, this? definitely. Please. Oh my gracious. Oh stuff. my gracious. Yeah. So I'm at a, I'm, I'm at a training, I'm at a workshop and we're, <laughs> we're going to connect with our angels, our spirit guides. Okay. So we're all in a, you know, we've all done a meditation and we're all really calm and we're being led and, you know, our angel guides are invited to come in and, um, you know, and mind step forward, huge, just huge. Did you visually see it or did you just feel the presence? I did. I did. Oh, wow. And it kind of, you know, it's like, oh, it was not what I was expecting. It definitely didn't, <laughs> didn't look like the pictures that you see. <laughs> sure, sure. But, but here, here, here he was. And we were to ask our angel what the name was. And so I, you know, in my mind, I said, oh, and what's your name? And I, I hear, I have no name. It's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. All right, then. And, you know, the meditation continued on. And all of a sudden, um, I had an angel touch my hand and it burned. It burned so bad and it started to bruise. I couldn't believe it. And I, cu I could barely move my hand. That was my first real angel experience. Oh, I couldn't think? find anybody to talk to about this. And I knew I wasn't a scary, you know, this wasn't a, a scary entity. I knew that. Um, and so there's um, one of my mentors, she's known as the angel lady. I finally uh, was able to talk to her about it. She said, oh, no, the, some of the most powerful full angels have no names. And they, they aren't all fluffy bunnies. <laughs> they can, they're very powerful. What do you think the burning hand message was about? I think it just touched me. And then she said, that's because you're a healer. Oh, the burning hands. Uh -huh, ah, uh -huh. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. But nobody, I mean, I, I, yeah, they, my angel did not, I did not show me his wings, his or her wings. Well, at least it wasn't like a big fiery demon. <laughs> no, no. And, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, I knew it wasn't a bad thing, but it sure didn't feel good. And I, I accepted it for what it was. You know, I just was surprised. Yes, some of those angel experiences can be very, very intimidating. My own personal experience, I can only speak from my own personal experience. And my angel experiences have been very intense. And it's it's both loving, but at the same time, it's like this spiritual mentorship that's very, very, very intense. And it, mm -hmm. it can't all it's not this like always this fluffy kind of, you know angelic singing voice hello you know the real story is a little bit different than than what you see out there <laughs> well i'm glad to hear i'm not alone i mean <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well you know that yeah. red rabbit story that was when you were talking to your angels right and you asked for a sign you wanted to hear the. i wanted a sign from my guide yep yep and you asked to I... see a red rabbit specifically a red rabbit right a red rabbit yeah and and you you know you can do that make it make it a little bit of a challenge, you know, like instead of going, well, I want to see a butterfly. Well, you'll, there are butterflies around. <laughs> not, and I'm not saying that that's not a, a sign. Sure. Sure. But, Don't say I know, want to see a like, stop sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but challenge, challenge your guides a little bit. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just say a red rabbit. Cause look, what, the, um, there's an ice cream blue bunny. So why not, you sure. know, red rabbit. Yeah. And, and, and of course we know signs can show up anywhere. It could be on, you could be driving down the highway and a, a truck goes by and you see a red rabbit that didn't happen. So I had asked 
and several days had gone by and I was, I was driving through this town um, and I had never been there before. And I'm sitting there at the, the four corners and I, I kind of looked over, you know, across the way and there in, in the window was a red rabbit because that was the name of the store. Ah, oh, there it was. There it was. Okay. So after <laughs> I read that in your book, it really got me thinking, and this is something I want to talk to you about. How are these beings angels or whatever they are, how are they able to get behind reality, to get behind matter and somehow put something through time and space? Obviously the red rabbit business was, you know, had been around, you know, through time and space, somehow they're able to get behind all that to make you have this one weird synchronicity to get that acknowledgement. Where are they? Where are we? It's so intense to think about these abilities right? that they have. <laughs> That's the question for the ages, Jay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just it just tickles me, though. It, it tickles me. Well, you hear about people in India. They talk about their gurus, just like you know we talk about authentic psychics versus charlatans. The authentic gurus out there, they have similar stories like that, where the guru will say something and a person will be on a walk and they'll see the thing or something. And they're able to get outside of space and time to get behind, to interact with you personally. That's so mm -hmm. powerful to think about. I know. I, and don't you love it? I do love it. And I love I the, do. the flexibility, the malleability the, of reality, how it's really just your mind and the divine mind interfacing constantly. And then of course, everyone else's mind all in this wonderful pool interfacing. Right. And the universe will give you what you want. I mean, you just have to be open to it. You yeah. really do. Yeah. Ask and you yeah. shall receive as Jesus said, right? Like exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, it, and it just delights me. I love the wonderment of it all. You know, I really do. I really want to know what happens after our experience here in the third dimension to where we have these spirit guides. How do you get that job? You know, how, how do you get assigned a certain spirit? What happens to these spirits afterwards? It's such an interesting experience. And you think about the extraterrestrial component, you know, where if there's other yeah. life like us out there in the universe, which, you know, there is, then they must have, yep. they must have spirit guides too. And then just the infiniteness, the vastness of it. it, it it's really yeah. a lot to process. It, and it, it really does blow your mind, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, you could... <laughs> You can just sit there and think about that for <laughs> days. And well, that's what we do here on <laughs> Midnight I have. on Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you came to the right place. That's what we do here on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I know that when it's my turn to go, um, I plan on trying to nudge my kids anyway, you know, whether they listen to me or not, or pick up my signals, who knows? I don't want to know if I want to see what all my kids are doing after I'm dead. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't want to all the time. I'll come when they ask, you know, they need some help. I'll be there, but you know, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. It is. It is. And, uh, actually it's kind of funny because, um, I was, I was writing a story and I thought it was going to be about my mom, but my dad popped in and he decided it really should be about him. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. And he wouldn't leave. And, and, I, and so I wrote the story. It, I ended up writing a story about him and it was great and it was wonderful. Um, you know, and then he was very pleased, <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, you mean it was his time to pop in and say, uh, you know, I need a little bit of recognition here. Do you, um, do you feel like sometimes cast it as a psychic person, as a medium that you, you want to ring the bell and be like, there's something outside of this life. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. I actually stopped using the word death and dying. I use the word graduating now. I feel like if we flipped like our that. perspective from dying or death, if you said, oh, you know, my friend graduated. You know, if you said my friend yeah. died, what if they say you said they graduated and everybody knew what you meant? Wouldn't that just change the I whole experience? That. I think so. And, you know, it's just, yeah, I, 
we're, we just get so afraid. And I, that's the thing that I've learned in, in doing all of the studying and, and meeting people, having the experiences. There's nothing to be afraid of. Do you, you know? ever just want to just shout it from the rooftops, though, and just be like, look, people. I do. It's fine. I do. I this really is like do. five minutes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I know my dad always said, you know, when when I die, just put me in a box and put me out on the curb, you know, for pickup. <laughs> it's like, dad, that's horrible. Stuff me in the he, compost he, bin. <laughs> I know. Not, e- not even the compost <laughs> bin, just in the trash. He didn't even care. So <laughs> he, he just said, yeah. And it would just upset me so much, but you know, he, he had no belief in the after none at all. He said, when you're done, it's dark. It's you're done. You're done. Well, it wasn't, it was probably six months, nine months after he passed, um, he showed up in a dream and he looked at me. I looked at him and I I was so shocked. It's like dad. And he just looked and smiled. And I, and I, I said, ah, you know, the secret now. And he nodded his head. And it wasn't that it was all dark. He was, he was hanging out. Exactly. Come on. All dark. I know. Boring. <laughs> like that was, if it was really like that, what a waste. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But he knows now. Right. <laughs> he knows now and he's over there helping, you know, he's hanging out with his ancestors, loved ones, his wife, right. your mom, you know, what do you think about divination yeah. tools? Like people use these Ouija boards. They do seances. Do you th- you know, to speak to these dead people that are on the other side, do you, are you yeah. okay with that? Do you think that invites things that maybe could be negative? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's your mindset and the, and just as you said, they're tools, they're, they're not actually doing the work. They're just tools. And I think a lot of it is to help you focus your mind, you know, to, to, to hone in on what you're trying to do, whether it be the pendulum or a, on a Ouija board or crystals or anything like that. And crystals are a little different. I mean, they definitely have their own energy. We know that, but, um, uh, and they can help in, in, in many, many ways, but they're still tools. And when you're talking about psychic ability, uh, that's what you have to remember. They're tools. You're the one that's doing well, your spirit spirit is doing the work. Right. But it's, you know, even Ouija boards, because some people are very hesitant about Ouija boards. They feel like it's too commercial. It's too easy to open a portal and connect with something. You don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's kind of like the Twix. There's the left side and the right side of the Twix bar. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so maybe if a person is like trained, there's someone like you that's very advanced, and then they could approach a Ouija board and have great success with it. But a, a crew of 15 year olds that are, you know, not knowing what they're getting themselves into, maybe yeah. have a different experience. It, it could be, but, but I, I remember, you know, I played with them when I was that age and didn't have a clue what I was doing and I was never afraid, nothing bad ever happened. And I'm not saying that it doesn't, but in my experience, nothing ever happened. Did anything ever you know? come through? Did you so, ever have any kind of spirit contact? Yeah. And it was, there, it was never anything scary, you know? Um, and now knowing now, I would have done a a prayer, you know, of protection saying, let only light and love come through beings of light and love come through because you really don't want to mess with that. There are portals. You don't want something negative walking through. I don't want to say bad, but you don't want something negative, something that you can't handle walking through. So you You think there's a, a kind of a differentiating point there. You feel like there's really intense beings that maybe may not be negative, but you just can't handle them because their energy is so intense. That dimension that they're coming from is so powerful. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I, th- I think there's that, but you know what, just like people here, there are some people that are um, like to get up to shenanigans. And I think it's the same with oh. other entities. Pranksters. You in know? A way. Yeah. Let's just mess. <laughs> Um, you know, with these people a little bit. And again, that's in my experience. Now, others, 
you know, may have had some horrific things and would argue that with me. And that's their experience in everything that I've done. I've never, ever had anything um, scary come through. Wow. Well, it seems like you're such a loving person that you would almost just instantly block that. Maybe you were born with a shield. You just don't realize it. Maybe you have that shield because you're such a high frequency person. Well, I I think we all have it, uh, you know, but uh, again, our experiences as we're going through our life, they can lower our energy levels. You know, you know, because everybody's born equally, but we don't all equally experience things. So uh, maybe then if you're if 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 you decided to do shenanigans when you were younger and then you start to play with the Ouija board and and it's like, oh, great, this guy's got my kind of energy. I'm coming through, you know, like attracts like. Ah, that's a really good point. So if you're just in that lower frequency, that's what you're going to attract. But if you're in this loving, you're a good mm-hmm. person, you know, maybe you don't have that karma. You're going to yeah. attract something pretty benign. Right. And then, right. And that's why they say, even if you, you know, if you, um, if you, you drink, you, and you, maybe you go to a bar, you, you might pick up um, an entity that was an alcoholic and they follow, it follows you home because you've lowered that frequency so that they connect to that. Wow. So you're there just, and they had a life at some point and they died and exactly. now, wherever they're at now, they're trapped and they're looking to feed on something. That's interesting. Cass, I want to talk to you about a section in your book about chakras, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what chakras are and how they show up for humans. I know that I've read a book, the book of the Hopi, they talk about chakras, but they only talked about five. I know in Eastern cultures, they talk about seven chakras and chakras for most people. They understand that they're these energy wheels, but could you tell us a little bit more about what chakras are? Sure. Um, they're energy centers in our body and, uh, of, and that's what they are. You can't open up your physical body and go, Oh, I see the, you know, the heart chakra. I see the third eye chakra. They're just energy centers. And actually um, those are some of the, we talk about the major ones, you know, the seven or eight, because there um, I talk about the thymus is also one of the big chakras, but then there are also the, the nadis, the smaller ones that go throughout the body. I mean, we have thousands of energy centers through the body and it's just how you, it, it communicates And, you know, no one, no one chakra is better than the other. A lot of times people want to think, oh, well, I I need to, I want to develop my crown chakra, you know, the highest one. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Yeah. But you know what? If you don't have a good solid foundation, it all crumbles. So that root chakra is very important. They're all very important. And, um, you know, and they, they start to develop at different ages of our lives. And when certain things, for instance, um, let's just say the root chakra, chakra, when you're a baby, if your needs aren't met or a, a small child, you know, toddler, your needs aren't met, there, there can be a, a, come a rip in that energy field. And that stays there until you start to heal it. And even when you heal you know, just like our physical body, it leaves scars that we have to deal with. So um, if we don't believe that, you know, our needs are met, then we go and search, searching to meet those needs throughout our lives and, and so on and fo- so forth. So it creates early on the, these energy centers. And you're talking about like the, our energy body, we have a physical body, right? Heart, lungs, mm-hmm. intestines, all mm-hmm. that stuff, brains. Some of us have brains. Yeah. I don't know if everybody has <laughs> brains. But, <laughs> but now you're talking about the energy body. This is something different. Yeah. And in that energy body, there are centers. And each one there of those is. centers affects a certain part of our being, whether it's our emotional being, our physical being, and mm-hmm. even our sexual being. I guess that's part of our f- physical being. 
and they can be Absolutely. out of whack. They can be, like you said, they can have scar tissue from damage early on in your life. They could be completely damaged. And, and supposedly I, from what I've heard, and you can tell me if I'm wrong about this, they spin in a certain direction. And if they're out of whack or misaligned, they spin in an opposite direction or slower. Is that true? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and for myself, I don't really pay a lot of attention because I feel like the body, the body, the, the physical body, man, you get a cut, it's instantly starting to heal itself. Right. Right. The chakras, the follow suit, they, they know what they're doing. If you've got too much happening, they can slow themselves down. Now, obviously, a, a healer can help with that. I'm not saying that you never do that. But um, if you think of the chakras as a pulley system, that's how they are. Some will spin clockwise. Some will spin counterclockwise. So it pulls up that energy from the root all the way up through and out the crown. Do you think it takes a lot of work to align your chakras? Does it take years of work if you've had emotional trauma or psychological trauma? What are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are this. You can go and get your chakras balanced. You know, a, a healer, it's like, okay, Jake, yeah, okay, yep, everything's good. Everything feels balanced. You step out the door and a car almost hits you, bam your chakras just went out of balance, out of alignment. So, or somebody, you, you have an argument with your significant other, you know, it can, it can affect your, your energetic centers. So um, you can easily set your intention to have a balanced chakra system in the morning and do it yourself, you know, uh, or you can have somebody help you. Because there are times when you do need that and you do need to have some of those releases. Does that fall under the category of Reiki then if the a chakra balancing person or do they have their own field? No, I think it does. It's all energy, right? right? That's what I was it's thinking. It's all right? energy. I thought Reiki. It's all right, energy. Right. You can call it whatever you want. And, you know, some people might get really upset with me for saying that, but <laughs> it's just, it's energy. It's how, what, how do we describe it? What label have we assigned it? You know? Sure. But and you think that meditation could be something you could do to balance your chakras? Oh yeah. It just calms everything down, slows everything down, you know, and then you can feel, you can actually take your hands, you, know, you can rub your hands together and put your hands just above those energy centers and you can feel um, maybe one feels a little cooler, one feels a little warmer. You know, you can go up all the way up through that energy field and you can determine for yourself if something's going on. Right. And this is some of the things you talk about in your book, right? These are exercises and techniques mm -hmm. that you can use to develop these things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're, you know, we're, we're created to be whole. We, we absolutely are. And it's, we innately want to heal, you know, not only ourselves, but others. And so we've got these tools and you, you, you use them. They're tools, you know, our hands, our body is so miraculous. Like, like I said, you can feel where a sliver is. You might not even be able to see it, but you can feel it. You know, it's there. Right. You're getting sent the information. It's hitting some nerves, some cells, and it's sending mm -hmm. the information to mm -hmm. your brain. And it works the same mm -hmm. way energetically, you're saying. Right, right. So let's say, um, you know, you, you're having an argument with your significant other. You and your heart is just really hurting. And you can put your hand over that heart chakra and help calm that down a little bit. You know, it'll, it will help. And I don't know that you have to necessarily worry about if it's spinning the proper way or not. I had one person, um, she was a Reiki practitioner or was uh, being trained to be a practitioner and asked me one time if it was true that in order to do Reiki, you had to wear all white. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, it might, for a fact, sure. Be, be more dramatic. I, I guess. <laughs> I know. Well, and I kind of felt really bad because I didn't want to diss her teacher. But, you know, if you come across an accident, you know, and you want to give some Reiki, you don't go, well, let me quickly get into something white so that I can do Reiki. Well, hold on, you I'm know, only in a jeans and t-shirt. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. help. I... Right, because <laughs> it just comes out of, it just comes out of our hands, our, our you know, our palm energy centers or, you know, and, and distance wise, you can do it distancely too because it's energy and energy flows. Where you focus, it's going to flow. Right, and do you think that uh, we innately want to heal each other as humans because we know that our evolution is tied to each other. My personal evolution is tied to the collective evolution. I think, do you think we intuitively know that? Is that why we want to heal each other? We're empathic. That's why I think, you know, and uh, it's like, I see you hurting. I want to help alleviate that pain and just what you said. But I think the first instinct is, oh, my my, you know, fellow human being is in pain. They're hurting. What can I do? What do I have to offer to help alleviate that? And and it's instinctual. And I think that that's one of the things Mm -hmm. that makes humans special. You know, that's why I love humanity so much. It's truly in our in our most natural state. We love each other. We're trying so hard to make sure everybody's having the best experience possible. And if somebody's hurt, we want to heal them. It's exactly that's uh, that's part of the reason I love humanity. (laughs) Yeah, most of us are like that, right? (laughs) There are a few uh, outliers, but then you think about those people. I often say you have to have compassion for those people. They were little babies at one time. They just had something. That's right. Had something happened in their life that set them off course. Exactly. So you can have compassion for them, some empathy and send them love and, you know, send them that loving energy. And, you know, we don't, this is the thing. We don't necessarily know the impact that our love has had on somebody. That's a good, we point. just send it out there. You know, we don't know. And we really, it's none of our concern, you know, I mean, of course I'd like to know, <laughs> I want to know, right. but it really, if, if you're hurting, you know, I can just send that to you. I don't need you to give me a report. I know that, sending light and love out there just loving my fellow human being helps it has i just an know effect. it does yeah it has an effect no matter what it does it absolutely does well that gets back to our interconnectedness like you were talking about in your book you know it's uh it's a pretty powerful experience and i think that that's part of humanity's evolution you know is getting to a place where we're more psychic or at least we're aware or back to our understanding of our psychic gifts. We're more intuitive. I think that that's part of humanity's future. Do you think that that's something that's coming like a stronger Mm -hmm. psychic presence for humans? I I think so too. And remembering that we are all one, you know, we really are. If something hurts my neighbor, it hurts me. Yes, definitely. And, and, and that's, that's sometimes hard to remember and, and, you know, to recognize that something that happens on one side of the opposite side of the world does affect me. Something that happens on the opposite side of the galaxy affects us. That's something that we're going to shift to. I think that it's another level of understanding. Cass, I want to talk to you too, because we did talk about meditation earlier when we were talking about chakras a way to balance your chakras. But I noticed that in your book, you talked about how meditation was recommended for psychic development, but not required. But you feel like it could speed up the process a bit? It does, because meditation can help you focus. And and that's really what um, you need to be able to do is focus, you know, get rid of that outside distraction. If I'm going to do a reading for you, I, I need to be focusing on you, not worrying that, oh, I can hear this in the background. I can hear the beeping. I can, you know. <laughs> hey, speaking of beeping. Um, 
Oh, look, it's gone. Yeah. Right. Right. So oh. it, it just helps you to be able to focus. Right. So you feel like that, that gets you to that center place. Like we talked about earlier when you're talking about shielding, you just get to that point where you can distinguish mm -hmm. your own energy pattern, your own energy signature. So then you can determine yeah. what's coming in, what's going out. And that's yeah, and speeds then you up can hear. Yeah, you can hear the messages clearly. You know that that's there's a message right there. It's not the wind blowing. It's not my inner mind chatter. Right. And I noticed that you did talk about different methods. Like you don't always have to do it with your eyes closed. You can even use music. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. It's something I haven't really heard a lot from other people. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I don't use my, have my eyes closed. I just have them there when I'm meditating, they're open and I'm not really seeing, I'm looking at the space in between, you know, like. Are you kind of like relaxing your eyes and just kind of getting. Yeah. Them? Yeah. Like if I am looking at my laptop, I'm looking at the space in between my laptop and I, and you know, I'm just focusing on that. Okay. Cause I had a hard time doing it with my eyes closed. I would fall asleep every single time. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually, I have kind of have that same situation where, you know, my eyes are closed. I start to doze off and I'm like, Oh, I meditated. No, you took a nap actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it sounds like that beeping stopped. That's good. It's gone. Oh, it's, it's there. Oh, I was just uh, not hearing it. Well, they're, you, they're doing a movie, you said, right? Right, right. Well, Cass, we've talked about so much today. We've talked about your incredible book. We've talked about the different techniques you can do to develop these abilities. What are some things that you want to leave people with in a general sense? Like if you're feeling like you have this stronger intuition, if you're feeling like you can sense other people's thoughts or feel their life or however you interpret that, what are some very basic things like right off the bat that people can do to, to develop those feelings more to strengthen that? Okay. So some of the things that you can do is ask your intuition. Yes. And no questions. Okay. Very simple. Yes, no. Um, for instance, I could say, uh, should I wear this blouse today? Yes, no. And I, I can hear, yeah, or no. Oh, interesting. Or, and, and if it's a no, okay, well, should I wear this one? Yes, no. Now, while that may seem a silly question, Suppose you put on what your intuition says and you get called into your boss's office and you're looking really, really sharp and you get a raise because they want to talk to you about, you know, a new position or something like that. And you needed to be on point, whereas maybe the previous item you were going to wear wouldn't have given so much professionalism. That's really very basic. But yes, no questions. Should I go to the post office now? Yes, no. Um, and it might be yes, and you go there and there's no line. You're the first one there. Great. Or no, because you, you may not know why the answer is no. But start asking very simple, basic yes, no questions of your intuition. And then figure out, do you hear an answer? Do you feel it? You know, start to kind of to check in with your body. Is there something just a little different with, with each when you hear yes or yeah, no, almost like, a, like you know, some that's sort the of thing push. you have to start tuning in. Right. Pardon? It's almost like some sort of push or, or some sort of just yeah. like tweak in your energy field. And, and you have, you're saying you have yeah. to learn how to become sensitive to that. It's so subtle. It's so subtle and you can miss it. That's why I say you got to practice, practice, practice. And those yes, no questions. Should I go this way? You know, or should I go that way? Um, that's, that's a real, real basic one to start out with, with uh, listening to your intuition. Cause you, you got to start at kindergarten. You can't be in college. You got to start in kindergarten. <laughs> But what if you are in college and you're just tuning into this now? Those are that you have to act like you are in kindergarten is what you're saying. Exactly. We, you know, I, I think I say it in the book, we aren't handed our gifts on a silver platter. Most of us, 
most of us. We have to work for them. We have to learn to recognize um, uh, the signs. We, we, it, the subtle signs in our body, we have to start to learn to recognize what do these symbols mean, all of that. You might be 50, 60 years old and just coming into your gifts or, or wanting to recognize them or develop them, which is great, you know, but you still have to go to the basics. You have to start at the beginning. Right. And have that humbleness. Like you said, you can't really bring ego into the situation. You can't feel like, and you can't try to develop these things for personal gain. I think that that's something as well. These people, they think, oh, I want to get Cass's book so I can figure out how to be more psychic to manipulate people to do better in the business world. Maybe it'll work, but maybe in the end, you're going to get a terrible karma. It's going to be yeah. awful. You will. You will. And, you know, you do it with a purity of heart. You get good karma. You right. know, you reap what you sow. And uh, it, sometimes it isn't instantaneous, but you will get it. So, yeah. And that, that's huge, though, Jake, getting that your ego out of the way and being humbled. And yeah, that's that's hard. It's hard. We've all got egos. Well, I think that uh, egos can be your best friend and your worst enemy, right? Because I agree. they can help you have personality and be out there and achieve what you want. But at the same time, if you cater to the lower aspects of it, the materialism, the pride, mm -hmm. all those things, then uh, you could get trapped, you know, mm -hmm. very easily. And it exactly. takes you, it, it takes you away from spirit. I think if, if you want to derive anything from, for yourself, from your spiritual experience, just know that you're living in service and the things that you do are helping benefit people. It's, it's helping move this whole thing forward. And I guess you can get something off of knowing you're serving the divine, right? Uh, I agree. And actually, that's why I wrote the book. That's I was coming home from a writing workshop, as a matter of fact. And I heard in my I, I hear messages in my uh, left ear and I'm driving home and I, I heard you need to write a book. It's going to be called Game Psychics Play. And here's what it has to say in it. And I was like, I'm driving. It's like, whoa, hold on. Let me pull over. And I pulled over to a gas station and I just started writing everything that I heard ah. spirit telling me. So spirit actually told me what it, what it was going to be. And I know that it came about because I had gone to an expo and I saw, it just made me really sad. I saw these people coming in, they're hungry, they're searching, they're, you know, looking for answers. And there are definitely some really great people at, at those psychic events. There absolutely are, but there are a lot of people that have no business being there right. and they prey on your vulnerability. And that really bothered me. And I had been at that expo just a few weeks before. And then I go to this writing workshop and come home, coming home. And that's what spirit said. And I went, Thank you. And so, you know, the book really is serving spirit because that just, that bothers me. I, I, you know, there's so many wonderful, wonderful gifted psychics and mediums out there. And then to have the frauds less than ethical people do it, it, it lends a bad name and it hurts people you know, not only uh, the, the good psychics and mediums, but it hurts the public at large. You right. know, they're searching for answers. So, yeah. And yeah. then they, it, may, it makes them question other things that maybe they shouldn't question. It makes them think like, oh, maybe all spiritual things are just rubbish. Maybe all the metaphysical concepts are garbage if they get exposed to these frauds. These exactly. But thankfully, there's people like Cass Hillard who wrote the book, Games, Psychics Play, a guidebook to enhance your intuitive and psychic gifts. You can get that on Amazon and it should be out now. By the time I release this podcast episode, it should be out. You can also find her. If you're interested in Cass Hillard, you like what she has to say, you want to connect with her more. She has a website, houseofthespirit.org. Just like it sounds, www.houseofthespirit.org. 
of the spirit.org. She does classes. She has reading. So you can connect with Cass personally if you want to. And you know that book's coming out from Franklin Rose Publishing, Allison Gannon, an incredible lady. So thankful to have her help. Cass, thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to have you back, of course. I love talking with you. Is there anything you want to leave people with as we depart this oh. ethereal dimension and go off into the world? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Jake. I so appreciate it. I've enjoyed my time. Um, for everybody, you know, we are beautiful beings. We really are. We're precious spirits. Um, I, I, I love people. I really, really do. And I just want them to know they have everything they need within themselves and they can trust themselves. They've got what it takes. And, um, I'm happy to be part of the big family. Well, <laughs> I'm so glad we connected. And that was an incredible message. And people, of course, again, go get her book. It's amazing. I've read it. It's amazing. Game Psychics Play. Please go get it. Everyone, we'll see you next week. Midnight Thank on you. Earth. Thank you.